It is of the press and welcome to it, the program where we'll take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it. We'll be dissecting it this morning with uh, our senior editor, Kaede Ladeinde, here in studio. Good morning, Kaede. It's a pleasure. Good and morning, Amaka. it's good Amaga. to have you here. Mm -hmm. Now, let's do this. We'll be uh, joined also virtually uh, by... We'll be joined by Aisha Yesufu, who is the co-convener, as you do know, of Bring Back Our Girls. She will be uh, reviewing virtually from Scotland. Aisha, good morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me, Amaka. Thank, thank you, you for joining good us. Good morning, <laughs> Aisha. <laughs> All right, let's begin and have a great run. We will have uh, the Nation newspaper, the Punch newspaper, the Guardian newspaper to review, but we will begin now with the Punch newspaper, which is already displayed. In the, in the Punch newspaper, Chinese bank Sinosaur to fund $2.6 billion, $2 billion at the Okuta Kaduna pipeline project. The story is on page 19. Akari Dolu tests positive uh, and cabinet members and monarchs self-isolate. That story is also on page two. National Assembly and Discos ask uh, the federal government to subsidize power consumption. It is on page 25 also. While to a family of slain uh, cops sues the federal government, the killer captain, this week. That story is on page seven of the Punch newspaper. Again, we have the figures for COVID-19. Nigeria is now at 25,694 confirmed cases. We have 9,746 discharged and 590 people have died so far from COVID-19. The global figures are also there on display for you to see. The big story for the Punch newspaper, NMA, NUT, knock federal government over order to reopen schools. On page two, we can't resume. We don't want to die, teachers tell the federal government. AKT reopens uh, schools July the 20th and worship centers July the 17th on page seven. Alleged rape, IG orders probe of debanche accusers arrest. Excellent, on page seven. Wiki invites Buhari and hails uh, 78.9 billion uh, Naira return to Naira return. Um, these and more we'll have on the Punch newspaper. We will begin with you, Kaede, in studio. Which of the stories, which one is catching your attention? There are uh, several of them. And let me go with the, with the mindset of the editors uh -huh. of uh, The go. Punch. Okay. You know, talking about NMA, NUT, knock FG over order to reopen schools. Yeah. I, this is one of those moments where I don't envy our leaders. You know, there have been so much cry. Some people have said that uh, the children have been denied opportunity to go to the next level. And the federal government seems to have heeded that uh, complaint, that cry, by saying, let's have them, just the final year students and pupils, let them go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But I hope the next level will not be misinterpreted no, this no, time no, around. No, not that next level. You okay. mean education, Exi India education. Exactly. <laughs> so, I, you know, for the teachers to say, you want to kill us, mm -hmm. we don't want to resume, that tells you that uh, the palpable fear is still there. Right. Uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't want to blame the teachers. I wouldn't want to blame the people involved. Probably they looked at what is on ground it doesn't look safe. Probably the necessary measures have not been put in place. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue of why don't you do the needful before asking us to come in. Mm -hmm. So I think their fears are valid, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to also blame the government for heeding to some kind of people who are saying, let our children at least go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a sizable number. That's like uh, 10 to 15 percent mm -hmm. of the population the of the thing? students or the pupils, as the case may be. But, mm -hmm. But I, 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 I feel for the leaders. I, I think they will have to listen to these teachers. They will have to do the needful before asking them to come in. Yeah, let's find a place of balance. Let, let's hand over now to Aisha. Aisha, what's your thoughts uh, on this? And then, of course, you pick up another story that is interest, catching your interest, if you like. Uh, okay, uh, for me, my thought on this is basically, I, I think I align with uh, Kayo I mean, it's tough. It's a tough decision uh, to make as leaders. I mean, you're in a place you need to protect everybody. At the same time, you need to listen to the yearnings of the people. And yes, yeah, students want to go on and, and move on with their lives. I mean, especially those in the final year. Everything 
you know, things are dicey. We think that, yeah, you want to go on and continue your education, you want to leave school, and then everything is as at, at a halt. But at the same time, again, we have to think about lives and uh, importance of, of, of life and the fact that you have to be alive to be able to uh, continue uh, what you're doing. And I, I, I do struggle sometimes, just like I, you know, when you are using that next level, because a lot of tests, next level <laughs> transformation has been politicized by our leaders who haven't made it to be uh, what they are, what they actually are. But you know something that is really, the thing that is catching my attention is so far down, uh, at the last, at the bottom, right. let me read it up, where you have APC chief, uh, Kinibu's daughter, and to supervise federal government recruitment. For me, you know, this country is such a country that rewards bad behavior. I mean, it, it's so difficult being a Nigerian, being patriotic, being uh, an honest citizen, being, being law-abiding, doing the right thing. Everything seems to be against you. But when you do things that are not the right thing, things you seem to be to be excelling. I mean, it's such an irony. Elsie Oluomo, I don't know him personally. I don't know him very well. But some of the things that you, you heard and everything, is he the one to be supervising FG recruitment? Really? Seriously? I'm not saying that, oh, yeah, you might not be qualified, but then seriously, I mean, we need to do more in our country. And we, if we need to grow, if we need to grow as a nation, things should no longer be about who knows who, who is in a position to do things. I mean, the last time I heard, they were gunshot, they were fight, they were this thing being taken, and uh, he was uh, attacked in one, uh, some of their political whatever things and all of that. And then you find those people are the ones who are, are being rewarded. What about the hardworking Nigerians? What happens to them? Valid question. Uh, Kaede is here and um, nodding in affirmation. <laughs> oh, oh, Kaede. I, I was just going to Aisha remind, says it's very difficult to be a Nigerian. I, I, I was just going to remind uh, Aisha <laughs> to listen to Tenny's song when he said, I will report you to Luomo. <laughs> and that might make you remember the character we're talking about. Mm. But I, I think it's... That was it's, the first time I heard about that name. That was in that song. <laughs> that was the first time. So, I, I, but on a serious note, I think she has raised something very valid. And I'm sure that's why it's getting the attention on the front page. Yeah. Yeah, we are not trying to degrade the person of Oluomo, but we're talking about um, the fact that we're talking about recruitment. We're talking about people who must have gone to school one way or the other. Mm. So let us have competent hands to handle this. He's already taking care of the NURTW by record. is the caretaker chairman of NURTW in Lagos. Um, so I don't know the connection between that and that. Yes, Probably we might need to read that story. Mm. But on the face value on what we see on the front page of the national dailies, it is totally, uh, uh, it is totally uncalled for. Mm to have such a person handle such thing. All right. Let, let, let me, uh, Kai, I'll just stay with you. AKT reopened schools uh, July the 20th and worship centers July the 17th. There's been so much conversation about the schools. Also, so much conversation about worship centers. You know, if you put on, listen to television, radio, you hear religious leaders, especially those, you know, Christians saying, well, uh, what's going on? If you're opening up, Every other place, why are you not opening the religious houses? Do you think, again, um, we are at that place when we should truly and completely say, you know what, go worship the Lord in that edifice? Quite, that quite, you quite controversial. I read that story, I saw that story, and uh, it is expected for the kind of governor that they have there, quite cerebral. Yeah. He, he has given quite a lot of stiff conditions, you know, and you also recall what NCDC said at the beginning that the 65 years plus should mm, not even bother away. going to church. And a lot of people started reminding us that that means uh, Pastor Deboe doesn't have to go to church <laughs> and some eminent uh, religious leaders. Mm -hmm, so nice. uh, for whatever reasons, I think if those protocols are well followed, uh, it's something they can work towards. But if, if it's a no-no, it's a no-no. But mm. do not forget that people are eager, they are hungry, to go back to their normal life. Mm. Uh, the normal life cannot be that normal. We call it the new normal. Mm. But trust me, we will get there. Whether it's 20% of the normal capacity that will be allowed, 
whether the people you call mushroom churches would have to be avoided because mm -hmm. they may not have the hand sanitizers and the necessary thing that must be in place. And you also saw what a church in Lagos, when we had that report, mm -hmm. where they had a, a, a disinfectant, immediately you get into the church. With mm -hmm. those things, then, like somebody said, when it's time to sink, let there be some measurable distance <laughs> so that we don't have these droplets touching one another. Mm -hmm. It is quite important. This is not time to spiritualize what we should use our common sense mm -hmm. to handle. Okay. All right. Aisha, your quick thoughts on uh, religious uh, centers opening up churches, mosques, and you know, anything that represents that for Nigerians during this time? For me, I, I think uh, one of the things we, we need to understand, we, keep say, we say that God is all-knowing. God is almighty. God is everywhere. I mean, God has said he's closer to us than the blood that runs in our veins. So why do we have this insatiable need to be at a particular place and congregate and worship mm. if it's not safe? Even if you're in your room, God will hear you. You understand? So I don't get this religiosity where we want to, if we love God so much and we, we, we want to worship God the way we claim we want to do, why are we still doing all these heinous things in Nigeria? Why is crime, right? Why is corruption so high? Why are we not following through the rules of God, what God has said we should do? We focus on the religiosity and we don't do the actual things that we are supposed to do. And let's not forget, I think there's a term in the UK, Lista, I don't know whether I got that right, that is going back into lock, lockdown. lockdown yeah. And this thing will retire. We don't have what it takes to be able to care for a full-blown uh, uh, for a full blown pandemic. Mm -hmm. What we are saying now, it, it's linked to compare with what other people have gone through. God has been good to us. We shouldn't tempt faith too much. Mm. So for you, it's a no no, yeah? For me, it's a no no. People should stay at home. As a Muslim, I know that uh, the prophet years ago, how many years, over a thousand years ago, had said that whenever there's an epidemic, stay, stay at home. Don't go into a place where there's an epidemic. Don't leave if you're already in a place like that. So we should be able to stay in our houses. With wherever you are, worship God, God will hear you. Hmm. That's my partner take to it. All right. Hopefully we'll find a balance in this case. Let's move ahead now in the interest of time to another paper. We'll review the Nation newspaper. It would be put up oh, already. Fantastic. Thank you so very much to our producers. COVID-19, a hoax, says Kogi Governor. CJ didn't die of virus. Okay. That story is on page four. You know Kogi State's position from the first, you know, Get go is being that um, there's no COVID 19 in Kogi State. Anxiety in Ondo as Akeredolu tests positive. All right, um, that's on page five. Uh, Lawan to discuss metering before tariff hike. Osime opens a transfer talks with Napoli. Something on sports for the sports fans there. And the Nation newspaper. Uh, Namani Fashola Keyamo to reconcile APC members. Governors will mobilize for Izeyamo. Ainek poll will be cancelled if it turns violent. This and more, it's, uh, you find on page two and inside the nation newspaper. Minister and lawmakers clash over plan to recruit 774,000 Nigerians, young Nigerians. National Assembly Joint Panel turns back uh, Kayamo after shouting match. All right, that was quite <laughs> dramatic yesterday. <laughs> we will come to it. If you scroll up uh, a bit, we we'll get the figures again. COVID-19 figures, uh, this is Nigeria, this is where we are, you can see it for yourself. Uh, but I can see that we have a governor, a sitting governor, saying that COVID-19 is a hoax. Well, those are the figures, we will come to it in a bit. $2.5 billion AKK gas pipeline to feed four states, Abuja. That story is on page four. President terms, uh, all right. That story is on page four. Um, Kaede, you were already smiling when we were talking about um, the conversation yeah. or the, should I say drama, that ensued yesterday. A very yesterday. big drama, a very big drama. And uh, for the purpose of the Kiyamo we know, mm -hmm. uh, we're not surprised. It was more of uh, his, act, his uh, activist nature coming to bear. Mm -hmm. But was it necessary? I think the answer should be no. Uh, the drama that was displayed. Now, it, it, it's the job of the lawmakers to do their oversight function. It's the job of the lawmakers to ask those critical questions. questions. And uh, probably they were a bit uh, uncivil about it. But they, are say, they have told him that we have our, we have our uh, uh, code of conduct when we are doing our hearings. 
this was the drama for the benefit of those who, were, who had not uh, listened to our news, mm -hmm. uh, is the fact that um, the, the federal government plans to employ 1,000 youth, youth mm -hmm. in each local government, and we have 774 local governments. Correct. And the National Assembly is reminding the, Ni Ni uh, the Nigerian Directorate of Employment that what about the money that was approved in the previous budget? What have you done? Can we account for what has been done in the past before we talk about the present? And that was where the, the, the minister, you know, uh, uh, when the minister was asked, the minister directed it to NDE to explain, mm -hmm. and when the NDE DG was trying to explain, and uh, they were bringing it back, and it was like, are you trying to say that we don't know how to operate? And it led to a shot team match, and it degenerated to, you know, sh let me not use a, a more derogatory word, mm -hmm. but I think that was not necessary if it's about employing us and he told them he said you don't even have the power yeah. to even suspend the whole, quite okay but i think you are a visitor give them the due respect as a fellow lawmaker maybe i'm not getting the full picture but i think kiyamo should take it easy now he's a minister oh, yeah. and not an activist but i suspect that aisha will have a different opinion all right aisha activist. let's quickly hear your opinion aisha did you follow that story Okay, so no, I didn't follow that story. So, like I said to you, I've been off uh, social media and news for a while. I mean, it's even on the headlines, I get for that. I know what's going on. But I'm, I'm just back in today. But I read the headlines, and uh, I think on the, on the nation, there's quite a bit of explanation uh, on, on it. So first of all, Kayo, I don't understand where activists, so if you're an activist, what does that mean? Because activists don't respect or they don't do those things. No, I mean, if you're anyway, a minister. <laughs> There are key issues that are here. Mm. First of all, let's, let's not miss more words. From what I've read of this nation, let's not miss what I think that the National Assembly, they are doing their oversight function, they are fighting for the interests of Nigeria. No, it isn't for the interests of Nigeria. It's all for their personal interests. Let me take these things one, one after the other. <laughs> one of the things that on the nation, on the first page of our nation mm -hmm. that they talked about is the fact that the National Assembly members, the committee, they are saying that they don't know the makeup of the committee, who they are. The directorate of uh, uh, the uh, NDE uh, director, say, I think DG, that's what it's called, right? Uh, could account for Z8 out of the whatever number. And they're saying that how did they come about getting these people, the representatives in the committee? And I think some members were, were, were alluding to the fact that they were not consulted, they don't know the people. First of all, what is, the, what is their business in who makes up the committee? I'm not saying that the committee might have been made up by whatever, but they don't. This issue of man must know man, if they want to give employment, they will give a, a national assembly their own quarter. If they want to do something, they will give them. It has to stop. We must stop that. We must look for people who are capable to do the things that they need to, to do. And so fighting over who makes up the committee, who are there, it's, they are not fighting for us. They are fighting for their own selfish interest to put their own people in wherever they need to do. Having said that, coming back to the issue, FG to employ 1,000 people for three months. Z52 million has been set aside. Three months, is that is that sustainable? Is that what youth are asking for? Youth are not asking for peanuts. They are not asking for who will pay them 20. What will 20,000 do? 20,000 is like, what, $50? What is it going to do? Is it going to buy a bag of rice for you? Is it gonna, what is it going to do in your life that you spent all this? And then go, government will be applauding themselves that they employed 1,000 people in 774 local government. That's not what we are looking for. The youth are asking for sustainable environment. They are asking for a good level playing field. They are asking for an enabling environment for them to be able to grow. We have a lot of uh, intelligence, talent, manpower in this country. We should be harnessing them. We should not be condescending. We should not be, uh, be treating them as if they are beggars by giving them you know, Government is looking for uh, people that will cycle funds that will pay them to, uh, 20,000 for three months. And that's not what Nigeria is doing. Hmm. All right, Aisha, I, I don't know. I'm afraid the time is already up, Kaede and Aisha. Um, we wish we had more time. There are so many conversations, national interests that we need to take a look. But we're not able to do so. So we'll encourage our viewers to please grab the copies of all the newspapers and see for yourself what is going on in Nigeria. Aisha Isufu, thank you so very much for and being with us. she's coming on Friday. She and of course, you, uh, Aisha will also be here on Friday and just uh, to let our viewers know. So keep safe out there, Aisha, and thank you for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. And Amaka, I mean, sometimes quality over quantity. 
So we are good. All right. We had a good quality, quality over right? quantity. Thank I like you, that. Okay. I thank like that. You. Thank you. All right. And to you, of course, our senior editor, Kai De Ladeinde, thank you also for being with me this morning to run the show. It's my pleasure. All right. And that's how we call it a wrap on of the press. We do this, as always, Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Amaka Okoye, reminding you to keep staying safe out there.